a different environment that we got here today, but this is Kid Venture Online and I am so glad you joined me today. As you can see, I've been doing a little bit of fort building and today's lesson is going to kind of go alongside of that. As you know, we are in the middle of Easter week and I wonder what some of your favorite parts are about Easter. I don't know if you guys are into chocolate. I know I love some good chocolate for sure and some different uh, activities that you might be doing as a family this weekend. Things might be a little bit different because of COVID-19 and not being able to do huge family get-togethers, but I would love to know some of the ideas that you're coming up with for family events. But one of the things that we are going to tackle today is a little bit of a fort building challenge. So after we're done building our forts, I would love if you would comment below, tell me how it was, or even send me some pictures at my email address, um, which is ewall at cedarviewchurch.com, and show me some pictures of your amazing forts that you built together. So at this point, I would love if you would just go get some blankets, some chairs, some pillows, and with your parents' permission, of course, uh, build a little bit of a fort, and we are going to have story time in the fort. It's gonna be great. But you might be wondering, Pastor Emily, you didn't show me how you built your fort. Well, do I have a surprise for you. If you watch the next few minutes, you're gonna to get to see a really cool montage of my experience building this super cool fort that you have before your eyes right here. Watch this. colors I selected, it kind of looks like a cave. And as I said before, we're coming up on the Easter weekend, which aside from the really fun things like eating chocolate bunnies and celebrating with family and friends, the biggest reason for it is we're celebrating the fact that Jesus died and then rose again to take away our sins so that we can live in heaven one day. That is the ultimate reason for Easter. And a cave sort of thing like this is actually the way that um, tombs looked like when people were buried back in Jesus' time, which was about 2,000 years ago. That's a really, really long time ago. That's older than your great, 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 great grandparents. It's really long time ago. So that's kind of why I wanted to give you this example. So when somebody were to pass away, um, it would be sort of like a cave like this that they would um, be laid in. So it just kind of gives you that feeling of a little bit more of a realistic telling of the story today. Sounds a little scary sometimes to talk about things like that, but we can rejoice in the fact that Jesus didn't stay buried. He rose from the dead, which is absolutely incredible. And today we're going to talk about a couple of Bible stories that explain how Jesus is victorious over death. So I got a wonderful storybook here and we are going to have story time in the fort and it's going to be great. All right. Our first story today happened a little bit before uh, the Easter account and it is called We Can Trust God. Let me show you the picture there. All right. And if you and your parents want to look in your Bibles after this for where it's found, it's found in John chapter 11, verses 1 through 44. Lord, come quickly, the letter read. Your friend Lazarus is very sick. But it was too late. When Jesus got to his friend's home, Lazarus had already been dead for four long days. Roll away the gravestone, Jesus told the people. But Lord, Lazarus' sister cried, the smell will be terrible. Martha, Jesus whispered, your brother will live again. 
Then he looked up to heaven, spread out his arms, and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. I know you always hear me. Now, so everyone else will know you are God. Jesus turned toward Lazarus' tomb and shouted, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus did. He was alive again. And at the bottom it says, God is not in a hurry. His help always comes right on time. When God speaks, all of creation must obey. So tell him your problems. Then trust him and wait. When you learn to trust, God's answer will come. So this story talks about how Jesus had authority over the power of death and actually allowed one of his good friends to come back to life, which is absolutely impossible for a human. But everything is possible with God, God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ. So now, how does this relate to our story about Easter? Well, that's where our second story comes in, and it is called Jesus is Alive. I'll show you the picture here. All right, and this one is taken from Matthew chapter 27, verses 39 through 56, and chapter 28, verses 5 through 7. All right, Jesus was dying. Come down from the cross if you are really God's son, the crowd shouted. Father, forgive them, Jesus prayed. He saved others. Let him save himself, the religious leaders spat. They were making fun of Jesus. Father, why have you forgotten about me? Jesus asked. Maybe Elijah will help him come down, an angry man said with a laugh. It is finished, Jesus cried out. Then he took his last breath. The sky turned black. The earth shook. The curtain in the temple was torn in two. Surely he was the son of God, a soldier said as he fell to his knees. Three days later, Mary stood before the empty tomb. He isn't dead anymore. He is risen, she shouted. Her heart leaped with joy. Jesus is alive. How much does Jesus love you? He loves you so much that he came down from heaven and became a man. He gave up being with God to become a person like you. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died on a cross. He came back to life again. And because he did, one day you can go up into heaven and be with him. Well, that for me is one of the most beautiful stories that has ever been told. And one part that happened at what we call the resurrection or when Jesus came back to life that I found is really amazing is that there was a stone that was rolled in front of the tomb. So you could just imagine if there was a big rock in front of me and it was sealed tight and you couldn't get through no matter how hard you tried. And aside from that, there were Roman guards that were standing by to make sure that nobody broke into the tomb to um, be where Jesus was. And do you know what happened on the third day? That stone was literally rolled away and two angels just kind of flew down and sat on top of it. Like that was a normal thing to happen. <laughs> and then um, Mary, like we was saying in the story, she came by to um, visit Jesus' tomb because she was very sad. And she saw these angels standing there and just like, what just happened? <laughs> Where did Jesus go? And aside from that, Peter and John, who were a couple of the disciples, something similar happened to them as well at that point too. And they found out then that Jesus wasn't here. Yes, he did die, but he was risen. And I think that would be a really cool story. But what makes it an even cooler story is how it affects us today. Jesus didn't just die and rise again so we could have a really cool story to tell. He died and rose again because he loved us so much that he knew that all the wrong things that we have done in our lives, like the times we've lied and cheated and done things like that, they would separate him, us from God. And so 
God made the decision to send his son Jesus down to earth to take the penalty of our sin. So that all we would have to do is accept his gift of love and believe that Jesus died and rose again for our sins. And that's the way it starts. But then there's also an amazing life that God has in store for us when we ask him into our hearts. It's not perfect by any means. We still go through hard stuff. But Jesus walks beside us through that hard stuff. So right now, I'm going to lead you in a really simple prayer. And this is just the beginning. If you do say this prayer and you really mean it with your heart, we would love to find out and celebrate with you. And we'd also like to send you some information about what it's like to be a Christian, what it actually means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, all right? So today we're not gonna do a big countdown to prayer. We're just going to pray sincerely to God. And you're just gonna repeat after me. And if you feel like this is something you want to commit to today, you're more than welcome to join along. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for dying for my sin. You didn't have to do it, but you chose to because you love me. Thank you for desiring to walk with me through the ups and the downs of life. I believe that you died for my sins and rose again. And today I invite you into my heart. Wash me, clean me from the inside out, and help me to serve you. I love you, Lord, so much. And I thank you for saving me. Thank you that one day, as a child of God, we can be together in heaven and help me to walk with you from now until then. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer and meant it, I am so excited for you because that is one of the biggest decisions that you will ever make. And like I said, I would love to know if you prayed that prayer, if you would like to email me or put that in the comments section below. And I'd love to send you some information about what being a Christian is all about following Jesus Christ. And he is the best friend that you will ever have. So today we are going to sing a song called Good, Good Father. And in just a moment, I'm gonna get you to pause this video and hop on over to the music video that I'm going to attach. And we're going to celebrate the love of our father who sent his son to be our savior. I love you guys. Watch this video. What an amazing song. Our God is a good, good father. And he is perfect in all of his ways. Well, I am so thankful that you have joined me today. We're doing things a little bit differently, but it is a special weekend coming up. And I just wanted to make things super special for you today. So I would like to invite you and your families to a few things that we're having this weekend all online. So on Good Friday and Easter Sunday at 10.30 a.m. on this very YouTube site that you're on right now, we are going to have Good Friday and Easter Sunday services. Uh, our new lead pastor, Pastor Wendy, is going to be speaking and I'm going to be doing some worship songs, which is really fun. I love to sing and play the piano. So that's a side of me that you guys don't normally get to see. And we would love to have you there participating with us as well. Now hold on for this. We are having an online scavenger hunt. I know it's going to be amazing. So what it is called is Operation Rise 2020. And if you and your families email me by Friday at 6 p.m., you can sign up to do a family scavenger hunt event on an app called Goose Chase. 
So I'm going to give you all the information on how to get involved and it's going to be taking place this Saturday from 12 until 2. Everybody participating is going to be split up into three teams and the winning team, every family on the winning team is going to win a $25 gift card of your choice. It is going to be amazing. So if you're interested in participating, please send me an email at eball at cedarvchurch.com and we would love to have you participate with us. Well, that's it for me. I guess I'd better dismantle my fort, unfortunately. Maybe I'll keep it up for another little while and have some fun with it. But I hope you guys have an amazing time playing in your forts today and have a blessed Easter. God bless you guys. Jesus loves you so much, and so do I. Talk to you soon.